Hello future doctors, my name is Majid the Canadian IMG and today I just wanted to share with you guys my experience with the internal medicine shelf as well as the IM core itself, how I did on it and how I performed well, what resources I used as well as any tips I have for you guys uh, to excel in clinicals in general. So for the shelf itself, it's a pretty big shelf because um, it's the majority of what step two is going to be comp uh, comprised of. So what I used for it was obviously first up is UROL. There are 1,400 UROL questions, approximately maybe a little bit more uh, for internal medicine and these are obviously divided in different organ systems. Now initially I started off by using by doing questions based on an organ system like cardiovascular, the respiratory, then uh, nephrology and things like that. Um, but as I went on, I realized I wanted a more realistic view of the exam on how I didn't want to have a bias going into the questions. Like if you know if you know you're going to have a cardiovascular question, you're going to choose whatever is going to be related to the heart rather than look at the other options more realistically. So I did um, for you know random tutored mode questions, and in clinicals that's what you have to do because you're not really going to have the time to sit down for 40 question blocks every day, um, timed, and then review them right after. So with tutor mode, you do the question, you go over the explanation, you make your notes, and uh, you just learn from that. And that's like the main way you're gonna learn from internal medicine, generally because there, is, there isn't a lot of good resources and UWorld is basically your textbook. And that's gonna be true for basically all of step two and clinicals, okay? So that's UWorld. And then after UWorld, there is an Anki flashcard deck called um, Zenki. Zenki is great because it's based off the UWorld questions for step two and these are a good way to hammer down and memorize those key points that you want to memorize or if there's a guideline or you know treatments, pathways, algorithms that you have to know then you can use Zenki. Uh, Zenki you can find online um, and you can add it to your flashcards if you want to. After that we have online meded videos. Personally I did not use online meded as much as everybody else because I feel like um, Dr. Dustin, the uh, person that does the videos, he gives a general view of what's going on in the topic, but to answer the questions on the shelf as well as you know in real life, it's not really that great. And a lot of times the information can be outdated, um, as you know guidelines change almost like every couple of months, so it's not really a good resource. Um, but if you're you know struggling with something like nephrology, pulmonology, then you want to maybe take a look at the videos, get a basic understanding. Then you can look further into details by either doing questions or going into your textbooks if that's something you like to do. For me, I don't I'm not really a person that studies from textbooks, but I did use IM Essentials once in a while, um, either before lectures or if I was preparing a presentation. I just want to double check my information with what's in the textbook or give me an idea of exactly how I should structure my uh, presentation to match theirs. Um, so, you know, I am essential is, is fairly okay and it also has um, questions in itself. Uh, but if you don't have it, I wouldn't necessarily buy it. But our school provided it for us, that's why I used it sometimes. After that, you obviously have up to date. Up to date is a great resource. You're going to be on the wards, you're going to see a patient. Maybe you're going to admit a patient for COPD exasperation versus um, CHF exasperation versus, you know, asthma or something. And you want to know. How do you determine which one is which and what your patient matches up to? So you can look up on up to date exactly um, the algorithm for COPD exasperation. What you're supposed to do? Do you give antibiotics? Do you, uh, do you not? Um, how much steroids do you give? Do you give them um, a nebulizer? What do you do for them? And you can print off these. You can impress your attendings with it as well as gain the knowledge that's going to be on the shelf, which is going to be uh, most of the time pretty much the same thing on your questions. And then finally, I know this is a lot of information, but I have the AMBOSS question bank. AMBOSS is a fairly new question bank compared to Kaplan and USMLE RX, uh, but I think it's a fairly good resource if you have the time to hit up a couple of extra questions uh, in the meantime. Um, now, I have to, I haven't tried the Kaplan question bank or the USMLE RX question bank for step two, but I have heard really good things for AMBOSS and that's why I'm using it. And the way I would use it is first I would uh, finish up my, my UVO questions, then do the Zanky flashcards and Amboss question bank. So if anything is a secondary resource, you never want to, uh, you know, pause your UVO because that's going to be your main way of learning. And then you can do the Amboss question bank for extra questions. Okay, 
So you've done all that, and as you're doing that, you want to maybe do the NBME uh, practice exams. So there are four NBME practices uh, for the IM shelf, and um, they're about, I think, 50 questions each. And they're a good way to assess where exactly you are on the uh, process and uh, how you're going to be able to do on the shelf. So as you do that, maybe look out for what subjects or organ systems you are struggling with and exactly where your problem lies. Maybe it's your decision making or something like that and it's something that you can work on. And so you want to do all of those if you want to um, space that throughout the rotation. And then um, so you did all that. Uh, and just one thing about the NBME shelf that was changed a couple of months ago is that now there are short answer questions on the exam itself according to the website. I had short answer questions and I'm just going to give you my experience in that I think they're fairly easy as well as straightforward. You know, you're basically writing two word answers and uh, I only got two questions out of 110 questions that were short answers. So it's nothing that you should be afraid of. Okay, so that's for the shelf itself. For the core, I would focus on, you know, just looking up the information uh, for your patients, making sure you know what's going on, uh, why we're treating the way uh, we're treating the patient, um, know your way around the hospital, do admissions, you know, just get uh, acquainted with exactly what internal medicine entails up. Talk to a resident, see if it's something that you enjoy and if you want to pursue it in the future. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys all do well on your shelf as well as in your core. And if you have any questions, you can always comment down below as well as uh, message me either directly on Facebook or YouTube or um, even if you see me in the hospital, you can just talk, you know, talk to me and ask me a few questions. Okay. All right. So good luck and I'll make other videos and hope you guys all do well.